So after a couple iffy, meh episodes we just got, uh, the, the last uh, episode on disc one of season nine of Seinfeld is actually a pretty good one. I think it's a very well-known classic, The Merv Griffin Show, um, where Kramer just goes in his element and just has another crazy, twisted idea when he finds pieces of the Merv Griffin set in a dumpster. And he takes him to his apartment and puts up the set. And literally, like, most of the rest of the episode takes place in Kramer's apartment, which is weird that it took place in Kramer's apartment more than Jerry's apartment. Although we don't really, never really get to see much of Kramer's actual uh, apartment. But it was a nice different change of pace. But of course, every problem, like story that was going on in this episode was um, being treated like, you know, a subject on the Murph Griffin show. Um, so we have a couple different ones. Of course, we got um, George, who's dating a woman, and George hits a pigeon. But the pigeon didn't move. And, of course, George is saying how, like, you know, the pigeon should have moved. We have a deal. Uh, of course, Miranda thinks George likes to hurt animals. They were in the park uh, at one point, And then George decides to, you know, to run at the pigeon, see if they would move when he runs. They don't. I think he stepped on one. Once again, we have a deal. And then, finally, he was driving the car again one day. He sees a pigeon. Doesn't trust it. Tries to swerve around it. But instead hits a squirrel. And the squirrel gets taken to the vet. Miraculously lives after the little instruments arrive. But then George is forced to take care of the squirrel. Basically Miranda uh, forced George to sleep on the couch. While the squirrel sleeps in his bed. But how does he get rid of that squirrel though? Well, we'll talk about that in, in a second. Jerry's storyline is that he um, he's dating this woman, Celia, uh, who has this very antique toy collection. Her father was a toy collector and she inherited them. However, though, she won't let Jerry play with any of the toys, even though it's a bunch of like old classic toys that he enjoyed playing as a kid. George and Elaine, of course, did also, which, you know, we have the reasons we'll explain throughout the show. Um, um, like Jerry wanted to play with the G.I. Joe, but he was not able to play with the toys. So one night while he was at Celia's, Celia had a headache. So he went in to grab an aspirin. There's one that will not cause drowsiness and one that may cause drowsiness. So Jerry gave her the one that will cause, may cause drowsiness, which has Celia passed out on the couch. And then Jerry decides, of course, to, you know, play, um, play some, um, play with some of the toys. And then there was some football game that she had that George liked. So there was a scene where George came over with like an 18 pound turkey and wine. And I guess they had, you know, secretly, you know, put like sleeping drought or something like that in the wine for Celia to have for her to fall asleep. And they play with the toys again. Of course, Kramer and Elaine were not for this at all. As you know, Kramer was definitely you know not supportive of Jerry Dunas, and Elaine wasn't either. Until he found out that she also had an easy bake oven. So again, they were over there, and then then George uh, brought over for some reason brought home home videos of him being a child. There was some scene where he was getting changed, and he's like, "What are you eight years old?" He's like I was seven and a half. Um, so, you know, Jerry for a while seemed to be, you know, getting away with it. And then we have Elaine, who had a, um, who, um, her story was, was she had this new co-worker named Lou, and he was like a siler. Like, you know, she never hears him coming, but then he's just like right there in the blink of an eye, which freaks 
her out. He tries to get her back because, because he was being a siler, a creep up on Elaine, and taking credit for stuff that Elaine worked on. So then Elaine tried doing the same thing to him, but then it failed because the work that he had done was absolute crap. So the both of them basically got blamed for, you know, absolute crap, even though Elaine had nothing to do with it. So finally, Elaine just couldn't beat the Sidler that she gave him, I think, a Tic Tacs. Um, and um, so that way, when he walked around, you hear the rattling and she knew he was coming. And it was working until Peterman got sick of hearing it. And basically threatened to fire if he ever hears the Tic Tacs one last time. So, Elaine tracks down Lou, takes the Tic Tacs off of him, and says that, you know, the Tic Tacs aren't working, your teeth are turning green. He needs to gum. Well, the only gum was from this one Mickey Mouse, you know, uh, gumball machine. Which Elaine gets an idea, which we'll come back to that in a second. But, of course, you know, Kramer, again, keeps, you know, having these, you know, little, like, you know, show segments where, like, they're talking about their problems. And, and Kramer basically didn't really have any problems, well, until the end of the episode. But, um, he was just being, acting like he was just Murph Griffin the whole time. He even had Newman on there, on there as a guest. And, you know, nothing really, more so of, like, you know, like a co-host or whatnot. Um, my favorite part of the episode, though, is definitely, well, there's two parts. One, wherever, you know, uh, we hear George and he and he's walking in, um, Kramer plays some entrance music for him, and George has this most confused look on his face, which is just absolutely just hilarious. Like, all these process go, thoughts going through his head, and he's processing at once, uh, which is hilarious. Uh, of course, again, he sits down and discusses their problems, too. Um, I also like, well, I'll talk about the last, you know, scene with, with the set in a second. Um, but I also like, there was a moment where Kramer calls for a commercial break. And I guess in the original script, they were going to put in like, you know, an actual, like, you know, ad that Kramer came up with. But instead, they thought it'd be funnier to you know, kind of like, you know, back out of like, you know, Merv Griffin and get, just go back to like, you know, more so actual Seinfeld. Well, sure enough, it's exactly what it was. And it's something that I would do if I was, you know, pretending to host a talk show. But Michael Richards, well, sorry, Kramer, and of course Julia Lewis, Julia Louis Dreyfus laughs so hard. And in the episode, you actually see Jason Alexander like try not to laugh either. Um, but Kramer, you know, calls for a commercial break just to eat some chips and drink some like Diet Coke or something. Literally, just like it wasn't a commercial break; it was a snack break. It was so funny. And then in the blooper reel, um, uh, they, um, they have, um, they had, like, I, I, Kramer, like, burped, too, which made him funnier. But, of course, you know, everybody was just busting out laughing at this point. It was just so hilarious. Like, you know, a talk show host, just to call for a commercial break, just to get a little snack, some chips, and, and like, a swig of his, of your Diet Coke or whatnot, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. But, of course, Kramer thought that the show was boring and he saw more to it. So he got animal expert Jim Fowler to come on the show, which uh, which uh, George thought that was a great idea because he'd find someone who could take his squirrel off of him. Of course, you know, when the scene's set up, um, you know, when they're getting ready for the show and, you know, Kramer's in his element, uh, Jim Fa or Howard just says, where are the cameras? <laughs> And, of course, you know, Kramer's going on like he didn't even say anything. Well, first thing is, is, um, Kramer mentions to Jerry, so does Celia not know yet about you taking her toys and playing them? Nope, does not know. Well, sure enough, Celia was a special guest on the show and gets mad at Jerry for basically, you know, um, getting her, like, sleeping drought for her to fall asleep and her play with the toys that she dumps him. And then George shows up with the squirrel, but then um, Jim has has a hawk. And squirrels and hawks don't get along, and sure enough, the hawk, you know, sees a squirrel and, you know, flies and attacks George and chases the squirrel. You know, we don't actually see it, but it's implied in the final scene that it chases the squirrel around the set um, and ruins the set. And then, of course, in the very last scene, so they're in the coffee shop, 
you know, talking about that. And then Elaine gets invited over to Celia's with Lou. Um, and, you know, she just, you know, feels bad that, you know, she's just trying, she needs someone to talk to because, you know, Elaine dated Jerry and she dealt with his antique, antiques and whatnot. Um, but of course, Elaine is trying to get her to, you know, fall asleep because she wants to give Lou, because she, I guess Lou mentioned, I think, about he had this, this Mickey Mouse gumball machine that's not sold anymore, and I guess it was in Celia's toy collection. So this is basically, you know, the deal to get the, the, the Tic Tacs off of Lou, um, so that way, um, Piran doesn't go crazy, and of course, you know, she gets, he gets food, and he even gets to get his gumballs, um, from Celia's toy collection. And that's the Merv Griffin show. Now, apparently, of course, they had to go through Merv Griffin to get permission to do what they did in the show. But they don't know if Merv actually did get to watch the actual episode or not. Um, that's a fun fact. Um, Jerry actually appeared on the Merv Griffin show in 1986. I mean, he was only, I think, 27 years old. or I can't remember what it was. Um, and of course the commercial break music that Kramer chose for his Merv Griffin set is the same music that was theme music of the Jerry sitcom pilot, uh, from the pilot episode in season four. Um, you see here, uh, yeah, Jerry's, oh, I'm sorry. He appeared in the Merv Griffin show in 1986, but his first, he also appeared on it. In 1981, and it was actually Jerry's first television appearance. He was just 27 years old. Um, it says this is one of the only episodes which takes place um, more so in Kramer's apartment than in Jerry's, although we don't see much details of Kramer's apartment being revealed. Um, let me see here. Um, George just runs over a squirrel. And then Julia uh, Pennington, who played Jerry's girlfriend Celia in this episode, in real life is actually an animal rescuer. Um, and of course, you know, in the the scene where uh, Kramer took a commercial break just to eat some chips and Diet Coke, Jason Alexander can be seen laughing um, whenever this is going on. Um, and then, of course, George Romero was squirrel was foreshadowing was foreshadowed by Elaine in season three, episode 10, the stranded when George is leaving a party with Ava. Uh, and Elaine shouted, go, go run over a squirrel because, uh, they didn't want to be there. And then George wanted to leave with, uh, Ava cause he thought he was getting some, you know, hubba hubba alone time basically. Um, but yeah, but that's the Merv Griffin show episode. Also it was all, all called the Merv Griffin set, but they changed it to the Merv Griffin show. Definitely my second favorite from um, disc one of season nine. And with that being said, we have three discs left. 18 more episodes. And yeah, there is definitely still a few in the upcoming. Like, season nine may be my least favorite season. Um, there's a few episodes, several upcoming episodes that I don't remember too well that don't stand out too much to me. But there is some that still do stand out pretty good. Um we have an interesting one I know coming up in um, in disc two called called the betrayal, which is the backwards episode where they kind of like you know play the story backwards, including the credits and whatnot, um, and a couple others that are very interesting as well that I look forward to talking about for sure as well. But till then, guys, we will get to theirs very soon. Again, eighteen episodes left, three discs left of my Seinfeld review series, and it's been a good success so far, guys. With that being said, though, guys, what are your thoughts on the um, the Merv Griffin set, the Merv Griffin show episode? Is it one of your favorite ones also? Do you have any interesting antique toys that no one's allowed to play with? Um, and would you do something as silly as do a commercial break on a fake show just to eat chips and drink Coke? What are you guys' thoughts? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Be sure as always to slap a like on the video and subscribe for more content on my channel. Follow me on Twitter as well at DemandAirBoy93. Tell them guys, I am checking out. I'll catch you guys all later. Have a great rest of your night. And peace out, everybody.